Hi, my name is Faiza Ali. I'm a bio major at Lehman College, and this is my final project for the Mentoring in Medicine Virtual Summer Camp. I will be talking to you about the superior vena cava syndrome. To start off, I'd like to tell you a little about cardiovascular diseases. So what are cardiovascular diseases? Cardiovascular disease refers to any disorder of the heart and the blood vessels, that is the, the arteries and the veins. So the World Health Organization tells us that heart disease is the leading cause of death around the globe. In fact, one in three people in the United States, approximately 82,600,000 Americans are affected by heart diseases, which includes the superior vena cava syndrome. The superior vena cava is the vein that carries deoxygenated blood from the upper half of the body, that is from a forelimb, a head and neck, back to the heart. Now when there's obstructed flow of blood through this vein for um, reasons such as compression or blockage, it is known as superior vena cava syndrome. It is a rare disease that affects both adults and children and statistics show that 15,000 people in the United States are afflicted with this disease. According to the National Institute of Health, superior vena cava syndrome occurs about 85% of the time in people with cancers such as lung, breast, and testicular cancers, and lymphoma, which is an uncontrollable growth of lymphocytes such as B cells and T cells. It can also result from non-malignant conditions, including tuberculosis, thrombophlebitis, which is an inflammation of a vein caused by a blood clot, and goiter, which is a swollen thyroid gland. Patients with SVC syndrome usually have swelling and redness of various parts of the body, like the face, eyes, and chest as in the pictures below. However, researchers have shown that the swellings tend to minimize by mid-morning. Um, they also have headaches, vision problems, dizziness, and coughs. SVC syndrome can be diagnosed using CAT scan, MRI scan, and x-ray, which are done to check for any swellings or abnormalities of the chest, lungs, and heart. A Doppler scan ultrasound can also be done to check for possibility of a blood clot or blockage by examining blood flow in the vein. Since SVC syndrome is attributed to a number of diseases, its treatments depend on the cause. For example, radiotherapy and chemotherapy can be done to shrink cancers such as lymphoma. Surgical procedures can be done to remove tumors and um, uh, in the picture below, the stents are used to, re to release swellings in the four-year-old. Stents are small tubes that are inserted into the vein to allow for free blood flow. Swellings can, can also be minimized using steroids. Now, how can we minimize our risk of superior vena cava syndrome? Well, it, since it's secondary to cancers, it is significant for us to refrain from practices such as smoking and the use of tobacco, as well as limiting our exposure to radiation from x-rays, microwaves, and ultraviolet rays, which are all factors that increase our chances of cancer. Physical exercises and regular checkups are also very important. You can learn more about this disease from these links from where I gathered my information. So I'd like to say a very big thank you to Dr. Lynn Holden for granting me this great opportunity of being part of the MIM team. Um, to Mr. Andrew Morrison, Dale Hodge, Dr. Raj, and all the volunteers for taking the time to teach us so many things about the cardiovascular system. It's been a great experience and I strongly appreciate it.